Sorry, hi. Can you hear me now? Okay, uh, the term singularity was, uh, was voiced, was used today uh, on several occasions, and probably most people here know about it or heard it before. Uh, I'm interested in uh, not in the popular uh, culture uh, so much as in the scientific and philosophical interpretation of what exactly that is about. There's quite a bit of what has been uh, published, but not really enough. An apology, I'm not blonde, but I'm dyslexic. And uh, there will be typos in the, in the, uh, in the slides. Please go uh, again. And we're blackout in words. <coughs> I, I, I'd like to start in, a, in an unconventional place to discuss a uh, singularity. Alvin Toffler, uh, Future Shock, 1970. It used to have been a book that everyone read. Uh, these days I almost nobody heard of Alvin Toffler and he's been talking about a firestorm of change already about 40 years ago. And he was saying that Western society for the past 300 years has been caught up in a firestorm of change and um, that's what makes a, a, everything a, a, around us seem so difficult to comprehend, especially as we're getting old. And what makes it even worse is the phenomena of acceleration of change. And acceleration is very fundamental to the notion of a technological singularity. The second person I want to mention in the build-up uh, to the subject of singularity is Carl Sagan. In his 1986 book, this is not from Sagan, but that's what Sagan one of the things Sagan shows in this book, this diagram, is showing paradigm shifts. And what's interesting about it is, is that it goes all the way back, all the way back to almost the Big Bang. And if you and if you look at it, if you plot it on a logarithmic scale, what's really interesting about it is that it looks almost like a straight line. It's as if uh, the doubling time of events in our perception of history, all the way back to the Big Bang, the uh, appearance of prokaryotes and eukaryotes, the appearance of life, the appearance of apes, the appearance of intelligence, uh, 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 all sorts of things that seem, seem completely unrelated. Uh, uh, events in uh, evolutionary biology, events in the history of mankind, events in the cultural evolution, and so forth, seem to be making pretty much a straight line, <laughs> if you plot them on a logarithmic scale. And that's kind of scary because what happens there? <laughs> what happens when the uh, <coughs> diagonal meets the, the line, and that's apparently one of the most common notions of singularity. It just has to happen because of this. And what's also interesting about this is that, of course, only the green dots, yes, if you can tell the green dots, if you're not colorblind, if you can tell the green dots are those that belong to Carl Sagan, but very interestingly, American Natural Museum of, uh, sorry, American Museum of Natural History, Encyclopedia Britannica, etc., did not mean to write anything about the singularity or acceleration. They just published major paradigm shifts. But interestingly enough, if you plot them on a logarithmic scale, you get the same result. So this is uh, one of the most interesting points about the singularity. Now, I've mentioned, I've mentioned social scientists, and now I'm going to mention an economist, Robin Hanson. And Robin Hanson uh, did uh, his research about, uh, for example, writing his research about world economy doubling time. And uh, the interesting thing he says, well, it, it's very difficult to talk about world economy now because we're a mix. We're a, the world as, it, uh, as we are now is a mix of uh, industrial society and post-industrial society, along with a uh, farming society and, and even in some places hunter-gatherer society. But if we look at the doubling time of the societies, uh, doubling time of the economy of societies, then very interestingly, there is a huge transition here going on in the, between the agricultural revolution and the industrial revolution. And what's coming here, the next evolution would be there for the technological singularity. 
So, hunter-gatherer society, about 10,000 years ago and before, a doubling time was around a quarter of a million years. A farming society, after the agricultural revolution, about 8,000 years ago, until not too long ago, until the industrial revolution, it's about just, just below 1,000 years. And uh, for industrial society at the moment, it stands around a decade. Now, what happens after the singularity? People talk about a uh, world economy doubling time measured in hours, seconds. That's insane. Imagine that every hour a world economy doubles. That's incomprehensible, and that's what makes the singularity, the idea of a singularity, so incompre incomprehensible. Now, uh, people picked up these ideas. And, uh, uh, for example, Robin Hanson himself says, okay, there have been two singularities and this is the third. The first singularity was the agricultural revolution, the second was an industrial revolution, and the third one is the technological singularity, which we'll talk about in a minute. Now, very interestingly, Alvin Toffler, which I just mentioned before, doesn't call it singularity, he calls it a wave. And the reason he calls it a wave, that makes a lot of sense. We are not talking about a point, a singularity, we are talking about a process that takes time. And it starts off with the developed societies, and it goes off to the developing world, and it ends with the third world. So it's a wave, and in fact, the wave of the agricultural, the, uh, sorry, this is the first wave, the agricultural revolution hasn't reached everywhere. And the second wave is still, undergoing, it is still going on strongly in some societies. And in fact, uh, not all societies today have already uh, started even the knowledge of evolution. So according to Alvin Toffler, not singularities but waves, but again, notice the similarity. I don't think these people knew of each other. Certainly, I mean, they're both alive and they don't seem to recognize each other's work, but it's interesting to observe the similarity between them. And uh, Toffler talks about the wave, and he talks about the third wave, and uh, I don't know, if you, want to, if you want to get rich, ask the richest man in the world, uh, Carlos something, <laughs> Slim, thank you, uh, how he became so rich. He was interviewed, I think, in Wall Street Journal, and he said, I read Alvin Toffler, and he, and he carries his book under his, so maybe that's, that's the way to get rich. Uh, this, is not, this is not a publication, this is not a publication at all. It, it certainly hasn't been written by an economist. This is a philosopher working with others in the future of humanity, humanity Institute. And uh, it's very interesting. He's talking about growth rate. I apologize for my R. I wasn't born anywhere where R was like the English R, but it's growth rate. Okay, and <clears throat> in terms of growth rate, let's say we measure it in terms of the time it takes to sustain another million people, and there are all sorts of definitions, what does it mean to sustain another million people? Just think that there is enough food and uh, YouTube for everyone to grow up. So, 200,000 years ago, that's hunter-gatherer society, we're talking about yeah, just the emergence of few of the uh, Homo sapiens sapiens, uh, it, took, it would have taken a million years for the human race to sustain another million people. 500 before Christ, we're talking about 200, two decades, two uh, centuries, and at the moment it's 90 minutes. It takes 90 minutes to sustain another million people. Okay, what took a million years, only uh, 200,000 years ago. So this, this, is the, this is the essence of the notion of acceleration. Something here is going faster and faster and faster and faster. And the question is, what's next? So, um, one of the clearest signs of the acceleration is what's called Moore's Law. I'm sure everyone here heard of it, uh, or not. Moore, Gordon Moore was one of the co-founders of Intel. It's this company that makes those chips that make our computers work or not. And uh, Moslo simply says that every, well, it, there, are, there are billion variations, but I'll give you the simple version. Moslo says that every year, uh, computing equipment uh, either doubles its performance or halves its price. Okay? 
So the chip that you buy today for 200 pounds will cost next year 100 pounds, or for 200 pounds, for the same 200 pounds, you will buy a chip which is twice as fast.